Welcome back to Photoshop. Today we're gonna to take a look at image scripts and how they can speed up your workflow. Now there's two types of image scripts inside of Photoshop. There's some easy ones and there's some complicated ones. There's some custom image scripts in which you can write your own code in something like JavaScript and it will run those scripts. Those are not the kind of scripts we're gonna look at. Today we're gonna to be looking at the easy kind of scripts that just about anybody in the world can use. The first type of script we're gonna take a look at is an opening script. So I still got this image that I used from last time and it's gonna be perfectly fine. Now we're gonna need action, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my action and we're just gonna create a quick action here to show you how this kind of works. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna to go to button mode, I'm gonna go down to new action, and we're just gonna call this open action. And you can call this whatever it wants, and you can really make this do whatever you want. I'm just gonna create a simple one so you get the gist of how this is working, and then hopefully that will make sense to you. So we're gonna go ahead and hit record. Just drag this off to the side and we're gonna do something really simple. All we're gonna do is go up to layer, go to new adjustment layer, curves, and I'm gonna do that luminosity mask thing that I had. So I will call this luminosity mask and we'll just go ahead and change this to luminosity and then we're gonna go ahead and hit open. And so right here we have this as white, and I'm gonna hit Command I to invert that. And then I'm gonna make sure that my d colors are default. You can do that by hitting D. I want my foreground color to be white, and then I just wanna go ahead and pick the brush. I want my brush to be about this big. And that is all I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna come over and I'll grab this back. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stop that action. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop recording. And that's all we need to do. So I'm just gonna drag this back off the screen. We don't need to see this anymore. What we're gonna do next, we're gonna come up here to file, drop down the scripts, and we're gonna go to scripts events manager. Now, what this is gonna do is create an action and you can have these script actions happen whenever you want. So when you open the application, you open a document, you open a new document, when you save a document, when you close the document, anything here that you see, and you can even add one if you want. So what we wanna do it on is open document. And, and this isn't really anything but gonna save us just a little bit of time in doing something really, really simple. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna click action. And so in default actions, I just made that open action. And so I wanna select that, that's the action they want. Enable events to run inscription actions. We're gonna hit good. And then we're just gonna hit add. And so that's gonna add that there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. I'm gonna hit command W to delete that image. And then all I'm gonna do is come down here and hit open. And we will go ahead and open that image up again. And I'm gonna hit open. And you can see it automatically created an inverted luminosity mask for me. Most of the time when I'm toning, the first thing I do is a luminosity curves adjustment mask. I don't need to make it black. I don't need to come up here and click it. All I need to do now that it's open is make my adjustment and I've already picked the brush in white and I can just go ahead and start painting that in. So that's a great little tool of not having to come over here and hit another button that when I automatically open any image into Photoshop, it automatically creates this, and I've done that through the Scripts Manager inside of Photoshop. So we're gonna come over here to Photo Mechanic, and I'm going to open some images here. So here are the files. There's just a whole bunch of files that I've been using here, and I had my download folder. So I loaded all these full images into one giant folder. So the next aspect of Scripts that we're gonna take a look at is gonna be a batch saving process. And what's cool about this is you can do multiple aspects of saving. So we can do everything in this whole folder. So we're gonna save out all these files. We're gonna have it do an action and we're gonna have it save as 
two completely different file types. Really cool. Now, the first thing you need to do is, is make sure you get all your images in a folder. It just makes it work a whole lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and flip back over to Photoshop. So now we're gonna come up here to File. Then we're gonna go down here to Scripts and we're gonna to go to Image Processor this time. Under image processor, it's really easy. So the images to process, we're gonna pick that folder that we just had. So I've already have it selected. So image scripts, we're gonna go ahead and hit open. Next thing you're gonna do is where are we gonna save this to? So we're going to select a folder. And so I have a save file scripts folder there. We're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna put it in this location. The next thing that we have, we wanna save these files as a JPEG. Well, we want them as quality of 10. We wanna to convert to sRGB because it's what the internet uses as far as the color profile. Now, one thing it doesn't have is a sharpening function. You might wanna add that to an action if you were doing something like this or make sure that your images are already sharpened. However, it does not have image sharpening and it doesn't have watermarking. That's one really cool feature about Lightroom is it does have a whole lot of really cool features inside the export function. We're gonna resize to fit. Now it looks like I'm gonna make this image square, but that is not true. So what I'm telling this is I want it to resize the image and if the longest edge is the width, I want it to make it 800. And if the longest edge is height or vertical, I want it to make 800. So we're just gonna make it 800 inches on the long edge, no matter if it's horizontal or vertical. And then we're gonna come down here and we can either save as a PSD or a TIFF. So we're also gonna save as a TIFF. We're just gonna save that original file out as a TIFF as well as a JPEG, both at the same time. And then right here, you'll see there is run in action. And so I have picked black and white test, and this is just a really stupid action. It's just gonna convert it to grayscale, just so you can see how this works. And then I'm also going it to include an ICC profile in that as well. And it's really easy now, all you gotta do is hit run, and it's gonna run through all these files, and it's gonna take a little bit, obviously, because in Photoshop, it's actually opening them, running the action, and then saving the process out, both as a TIFF and a JPEG. We'll give it here a few minutes or a few seconds to run through this process. And once it's done, I will open the folders and show you what happened. All right, so we're done. So we're gonna go over here to the finder. And right here we have save image files. And so we have JPEG and TIFF. I'm actually just gonna select both of those. I will drag them over here to Photo Mechanic so we can see. So here is our TIFF files. And you can see it has converted everything to black and white because we ran that action. Now, if you didn't wanna convert everything to a black and white, you just don't use the action at all. It will just, you can just use it as a saving function. So it will save out as a TIFF and save out as a JPEG. Now this is really cool. If you have a client and you have to process like 400 headshots and you need to save them like full printable files under a TIFF and then you need to size them at let's say a thousand pixels for the internet, this is really easy process where you just select all the files and Photoshop runs through and does it all on its own. And then over here, we have the JPEG files. I'm not gonna show you, but we're just gonna open up this image. So this image would be sized at 800 pixels. So we can see up here, it's 800 by 530 pixels. And then this image is 800 high by 534 pixels in this dimension. So that worked perfectly. And then if we go over to the TIFF files and we go to the image and we open those up, those are gonna be full resolution as to whatever they were when I saved them. That's how you used two different versions of scripting inside of Photoshop. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.